Hey everybody, it's time once again to meet an artist who is going to be performing, of course, at Eurovision 2015. That's why we're all gathered here, as I guess everybody knows, right? All right, if you're watching online, here we go. She is so alive and gorgeous. Let's have a warm welcome for Anheda Dani from Albania. <laughs> Light. Uh, there should be a microphone down at that end too. Um, if I could just have you just introduce yourself and yourself and yourself and yourself. Okay. Who's going to start? You. Okay. <laughs> so I'm Elida Dani. Elida. Or is is right pronounced El Haida, but it is going to take a lifetime to say it right. So Elida is good. I come from Albania. I'm really representing Albania, and my song is I'm Alive. And uh, it's the first time in Eurovision, it's amazing, I'm loving it. And uh, I'm 22 years old, I, I am very scared, but I hope it's going to be good. And I enjoy the today performance, and uh, that's all. Cool, okay. And can we have, just so we know who's who? Hi everybody, I'm Carolina Meucci. I've been uh, working with Elijah since uh, last year. I'm the head of press of the delegation uh, from Albania. I'm Italian, but I'm, I'm working with Albania. And I am also the manager of uh, Elida. Well, uh, I'm Claire Dorel. I'm the head of delegation of Albania. First of all, I want to say that we are two gentlemen. We let the ladies introduce themselves first, and then uh, we and the second. We are so happy with, that we have a half an Italian team within our delegation. Uh, uh, this year. But the, the gentleman next to me is uh, Mr. Sagor Marcy, one of the lyric writers, uh, the lyric writer actually of the song. And uh, we are very much looking forward to the Eurovision Song Contest. I love Vienna personally. I'm sure El Haida uh, loves it as well. And we're looking forward to the show. All right, cool. Can I ask you about your name? And I don't think it's El Haida. El Haida. Bravo. Okay, take it without taking it away. El Haida. I did it again, right? Okay, all right. What, what, what's, what's, I'm sorry. What's the, what's the, um, what's the meaning? Um, I didn't know it has meaning, this name, until uh, a year ago, I guess. Somebody, wow. I guess a fan, told me that it's a name, I know it's an oriental name, like mm -hmm. uh, Arabic or uh, something right. like that, but uh, the meaning of this name is uh, like leader. Leader? Yes, in uh, Arabic, I guess. Not oh, really, yeah. really, but somehow it means like you are, you are someone that leads. How, how incredibly fitting, actually. You think? Well, <laughs> you're, you're, you are a comp competitive lady. Yes, I love competition. And I you like to be it. in the lead, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and you have been. I'm talking about the voice of Italy. Yes. Tell me about that. <laughs> well, I um, participated at the Voice of Italy in 2013, two years ago. It was uh, the, point, the turning point of my career. It was amazing. I, um, I'm very happy that I participated there because I had the chance to meet and work and collaborate with great, great, great artists like Ricardo Bocciante, who was my coach at uh, The Voice, and we are going to have... Uh, but he's a mentor for me. And um, everything's changed since yeah. then. And uh, now I'm here, so The yeah. Voice of Italy was a pretty good experience. You've also competed in mm, Georgia, is that right? No, Bulgaria? Bulgaria. And Romania? Romania? Yes, Montenegro. Yeah. A lot of um, <laughs> a lot of places in Balkan. So yes. as they say in Latin, nomen et omen. So if you're a leader, that makes sense to me. Alright, <laughs> I'm going to uh, take a question from the press right court. Right Guess who it is? It's Simon from Poland. <laughs> Somebody give you a microphone. 
Hi, hi. Hello, <laughs> I'm Simon Lid, Roto and Polish Radio Newsletter. Hello, my friends. Uh, Benia. Uh, actually, I, I think that you became the icon of international success of uh, your country by this victory, uh, the voice of Italy. Uh, don't you think, or do you think that it helped you to win the festival in December in Albania? And not because of the song you presented, but because of you. And uh, why you decided then to change the song? Well, um, first of all, I think that uh, being <coughs> famous, being known in your country always helps in one way or another. But I don't think that uh, I won because of that, the Festival of Gangas. Um, I worked a lot to, for the song deal, I think it was a very good song and uh, people and the jury liked it and voted for it so I guess that's the main reason why I was the winner of the festival in December and uh, the song, I changed the song, I actually didn't change the song in late February uh, they called me from the show and told me that listen Elida you don't have a song anymore, you are not going to Eurovision without the song and I didn't know I, should, I could ever come to Eurovision anymore because I didn't have a song actually the composer decided to withdraw the song and uh, I wasn't without the song for three days until the director of the um, show staff uh, called me and told me that we are going to do this, we are going to do a new song we had only three weeks left from the um, deadline and uh, we are going to do it, a, a new song for Eurovision. So we came up with I'm Alive. It was made for three days in the studio, closed up in the studio from early morning to late night, and we came up with I'm Alive. Okay. Yes, sir. That's with the uh, W. Will. Right. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi. Oh. So, hello. hello. Um, after you decide. No, no, wait. You must say who you are and who you represent. Oh, forgive me. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm with the Adams from Wimmy Blogs. Yes. And my question is this after you knew you had to come up with a new song, was this a crisis or an opportunity? At that point, you had heard other Eurovision songs, so I'm curious if it helped you plan what you would do. Mm, good question. Yes, good question. Actually, I didn't heard uh, at that point all of, of, this, of the new songs for Eurovision. Of course, I heard a lot, a lot of them, but not all of them, because a lot of new songs came up after 15 of May also, I guess. But um, I, I, I wanted to do a new song for me. I wanted to do, to, it to be true to me, to be what I wanted it to be. To be I wanted me to feel good in this song. I, uh, I didn't want to listen, oh, that song is good, I should, it should be like this, or this style, or this color, or anything. I wanted it to be my song, and I really did it. I, I sing it as I felt it. I, I worked with the guys as I felt it. And uh, it was an opportunity, of course, because I had the time. No, I didn't have the time. But I had those three days, and I was closed, and I wanted to just give it up for that new song. And it was all like I felt it. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, OK, I'm going to ask uh, this, this gentleman over here. There you go. Uh, Irakli from Eurovision Georgia. Buonasera, Elida. Buonasera. <laughs> uh, my question is, um, your both songs and music video, they say, they tell us very sad, but also very inspirational message in it. Is it something that you, maybe, is it something from your experience, or is it just pure fiction? From my experience, well, I've, I'm 62 years, 62, oh my god, 62, I'm 22 years old, oh my god, look at this. You look amazing. Who's your doctor? <laughs> oh, <I'm good. laughs> Okay, oh, 22. 22 guys. <laughs> Well, of course, I've had, I've had this kind of experiences. I've been sad during my life. I've been very happy during my life. And um, in that song, uh, I, I'm a female, I'm a girl, and uh, sometimes I feel very weak. Sometimes people see me very weak. And, uh, but I really feel that I and we have this kind of very strong, we are strong inside of us. We can move mountains if we want to, if we decide to, and we, if we believe it. 
And I am that kind of person. I think that if you believe something, it is going to happen. It, there is no way that it isn't going to happen. If you believe it and you love it, it is going to happen. And that's in the video. It's I'm me sad, I'm me happy, I'm me strong, I'm me inspiring. That's that's me in like my in the video, and that's me in my life. That's not fiction. That's pure realness. I like the way that the, the tear goes. I wish that could happen in real life. Yes, I wish that too. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a question from uh, an online viewer. Yeah, and it's coming to us from John Spiropoulos. Spiropoulos, that sounds better. And he says, "Hello, Elhaida. <laughs> in in your life, what makes you feel alive more than love?" Oh, yeah, this is a good question. Well, uh, love, of course, is what makes me and I guess all of us feel alive, but singing, it's always singing. I had a feeling you were going to sing. Uh, yes, I'm a singer. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but you know why? Mm. Lately, I've been having uh, this, um, this scary moments of uh, not of thinking that, oh my god, this song is very difficult. I, I'm not going to be able to, to do that in life. Yeah. That's another because question I know we are going to get. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know if we'll have time, but, but I'm glad that you said that because there are a couple of riffs in your song where I thought, oh my lord, life? I think that's uh, a lot of time. I tried to do it. Hmm, not so, not as I am. <laughs> I'll leave it to the professional. Okay. okay. Yes, and um, I'm having this kind of moment. I'm scared, you know. And everybody uh, with me, the professor, the so-called Marcy, the lyric writer, he's an also a composer, and he was like telling me, "Listen, uh, don't speak for a few days. Don't sing for a few days." And I, I had three days without speaking and singing, and. Uh, it, it, they were the worst days of my life because I, I noticed myself that I was all the time trying to start and sing a new song but then I reminded myself, oh my god, you shouldn't sing and it happened a hundred times a day so it was very difficult and I, I, I really now can say that I, I can't live without singing that music. But after the three day abstinence, when the first time, in, the first time when, you, when you sang, wasn't it like the most purest I wish. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, 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 no. It was it was a great feeling, but uh, of course, if you want to sing, you have to practice. Yeah. So. yeah. But you you have to keep and do these kind of exercises without talking and yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes to so just to let the chords come. Right, right, right. To relax. Them. All right. Okay, guys. Uh, I have to wrap things up. I'm afraid. But Douglas, everybody relax. <laughs> Thank you much, very much for attending. And your online viewers, as you know, you can send your questions and you have to specify which country. Hashtag Ask Eurovision. Next up in 20 minutes, Kati is going to be back with Romania. And now it's time for the photo opportunity. <laughs>